Hi again students Now we will continue our last part of our lesson and let's get started The endoplasmic reticulum What is it? It's a network of membranous canalaculi that extends in all cytoplasm It's attached to the nuclear envelope and cell membrane so it forms an internal transferring system that benefits in transferring the substances from a part to another inside the cell and so transferring the substances between the nucleus and the cytoplasm there are two types of the endoplasmic reticulum a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth one the rough endoplasmic reticulum is characterized by the presence of a large number of ribosomes on its surface it is specialized in synthesizing proteins in the cell, making changes on the protein produced by the ribosomes, and also making new membranes in the cells. As for the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the ribosomes are absent from it, and it's specialized in synthesizing lipids, transforming glucose into glycogen and modifying the nature of some toxic chemicals in the cell to reduce its harmful effects this is the difference between rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum as we see here endoplasmic reticulum this is, these are the smooth places here the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and we see uh, there, there, uh, there is a big difference between the two forms of the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum because rough endoplasmic reticulum has many ribosomes as we see these uh, tiny yellow points here and it's responsible for protein producing and also modifying but for the smooth here it doesn't contain any a uh, ribosomes at, and it is responsible for lipids formation and so on Golgi apparatus Golgi apparatus it's an apparatus as we say because it's a series of flat membrane bound sacs the numbers of Golgi apparatus differ in the cell according to the cell's secretion activity. Golgi apparatus is specialized for receiving the molecules of substances secreted by the endoplasmic reticulum across a group of transporting vessels. Then it classifies and modifies these vehicles, these vessels and distributes them into the places where they are used in the cell. Golgi apparatus may also pack them inside secreting vessels called lysosomes that move forward to the cell membrane as the cell dismisses it to outside as secretory products and zoom in to see Golgi apparatus this, this is incoming transport vessel and other components of Golgi apparatus what are lysosomes they are small round membranous vessels formed by Golgi bodies they contain a group of digestive enzymes lysosomes function is to rid of worn and snail cells and organelles which no longer have benefits furthermore lysosomes digest the large molecules of nutrients engulfed by the cell and change them into structurally simpler substances to enable the cell to benefit from them for example white blood cells use the digestive enzymes present in, inside the lysosome to digest and destroy the pathogens which invade the cell the cell is not affected by the lysosome enzyme because these enzymes are surrounded by a membrane isolating them from the cell components they cannot harm the cell 
Now we are talking about mitochondria. Mitochondria are sac-like membranous organelles. Its wall consists of two membranes. A group of folds known as cristae extends from the inner membrane to its matrix. These cristae work on increasing the surface on which the chemical reactions producing the energy take place. Mitochondria are considered the main storehouse for the respiratory enzymes in the cell. They are also considered the storehouse for other substances necessary to store energy resulting from respiration due to the oxidation of the nutrients, especially glucose. The energy resulting from respiration is stored in the form of a chemical compound called adenosine triphosphate, ATB from which the cell can extract energy once more. As we see here, this figure shows the mitochondrion components. This is the inner membrane and this is the outer membrane DNA. As we have said before, that some components of the cell also contains a separate DNA. Uh, here particles which uh, synthesize ATB synthesis which um, synthesize ATB molecules which store energy. These are the cristae which give a large space and here we see also ribosomes and granules. The vacuoles. They are sac like membranous sacs, similar to bubbles filled with a liquid. They are store water, nutrients, and the wastes of the cell until it gets rid of such wastes. The vacuoles are small and large in number in animal cells while they are collected in one big vacuole or more in the plant cells. The plastids. They are various shaped membranes and the plastids here are one of the most important components of plant cells. They are various shaped membranous organelles present in plant cells only. There are three types of plastids that differ from each other in regard to the pigment present in each type. White plastids or leucoplasts Leucoplasts, they are plastids that don't contain any type of pigments, so we call them white plastids. They work as centers for storing starches. Furthermore, they can be present in the roots of sweet potatoes, stems of potatoes, and the internal leaves of cabbage. The other kind is chromoplasts. Chromo is, uh, uh, means colored. They are blasted that contain cartinoids which their colors vary between red, yellow, and orange. This type extensively spread in the petals of flowers and fruits and also in the roots of some plants such as grapeseed. The third kind is chloroplasts. Chloroplasts is the green plastids. They are present in the leaves and stems of green plants. They contain the chlorophyll that transforms the light energy of the sun into chemical energy in the form of glucose throughout photosynthesis. Chloroplasts are composed of a double envelope surrounding a matrix called the stroma, which contains layers of disc-shaped compact structures known as silicoids, which each group of them forms what's known by granium. This figure shows the blasted, the chloroplast. Simply it contains of inner membrane and outer membrane, the stroma, which is enveloped in it, and the granium, and the thylakoid.
so we have come to the end of our lesson today and I hope uh, it was useful to all students keep watching other lessons on nafham.com nafham to learn simply